Hello, it's your internet dad again, uh, giving you life lessons that I've shared with my own sons. Uh, they cover a whole raft of experiences, but they will also include a series called Dress for Success, which tells you uh, what is the basic uh, acceptance uh, in most business and social uh, events. And that's the subject of today's uh, talk. Uh, remember, if you like the series, click subscribe and the videos come out every Wednesday and Sunday. So we get down to business. Uh, the shirt is the basis of everything you wear, uh, casual or more formal, but I want to concentrate on the formal because that's uh, uh, your employment, uh, that's your public appearance in more formal events. And it's so easy to get the shirt right, and yet I'm amazed how often people get it wrong. You can obviously choose heavyweight uh, shirts or lightweight shirts, depending on the summer or the winter, uh, but the dimensions should always be the same. And one of the ways of doing that is go to a shop uh, that has a big internet operation. And by that I mean, we're not talking about a small corner shop, uh, we're not talking about a huge department store, but there are certain other shirts, uh, uh, shirt companies uh, that have shops, uh, but also have internet sales. And that's an important consideration uh, going forward. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, Turwit uh, or Pink, but there are many other uh, excellent uh, shirt makers out there. You go to the store, uh, and they will let you try on a, a whole series of shirts until you feel comfortable in terms of size, uh, chest size, sleeve length, and collar size. Without getting too extreme, the less extra material around your waist, the better. And there are plenty of choices with slim fit, extra slim fit, and such as, such, such as that. Don't make it extreme, but don't make it blousy and you'll, you'll make the right decision there. In terms of the actual collar, uh, you've got the choice of a button-down collar or a conventional collar such as I'm wearing today. Uh, I always believe that the conventional collar looks better in a more formal situation. If you're going to the trouble of wearing a business suit or a double-breasted blazer at a social event, uh, uh, use, a, uh, use a, a traditional collar. Nothing wrong with the button down, but they came out of sport, believe it or not, uh, from the polo field uh, 100 years ago uh, when the players were getting the uh, collar uh, tips blown in their face, so they sewed on buttons that became a fashion. It's very much accepted, it's very common, you'll see it uh, all over the place, uh, but uh, as a finishing touch to a more formal event, uh, go uh, conventional collar like mine. Now, as I lean forward, you can see uh, that the collar forms an X, the edge of the collar uh, running into the collar around the neck. Try to work towards this X. There should be no gap here. If there is a gap, it looks sloppy. It looks as if you've closed, uh, uh, shifted the button or you haven't tied the shirt in the first place. So get that neat, get, uh, get that tight knot and it'll look good. The second thing is to Wear a collar where the ends of the collar tuck under the lapel. It makes for a very uh, neat look. Now you've got the option, you can wear a cutaway collar, which uh, may or may not do that, uh, or a very long collar uh, down, uh, down your chest. That will never happen, uh, that will never look as good. Uh, stick to the conventional, stick to the, uh, uh, the correct X, and uh, you're gonna do well. Shirt length. Uh, that's important. Uh, if you saw my dress for success getting down to business, you will know that uh, it, you have to show uh, a, a bit of um, cuff, barrel or French cuff, uh, with your suit or blazer. But it shouldn't be too much. And the recommended period uh, distance is a quarter of an inch to half an inch. Uh, that differs with the tuxedo, and I have a video out on that, uh, that should be uh, a three, uh, a, a half inch to three quarters of an inch because you show more cuff there. But get, get, these, uh, get these numbers right, these measurements right, and then be patient because 
you'll um, you'll be able to see from time to time they'll have Christmas sales or mid-year sales and you can stock up some uh, very good shirts 100% uh, cotton uh, whatever uh, 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 barrel or French cuff for $30-35 and very very good value. The next thing you've got to remember is to make that collar look good you need a secret weapon and that is what's known as removable collar stiffness and sometimes they're sewn into the shirt uh, which is better than nothing and you won't have a curl up of the shirt which over the lapel which looks really scruffy but they can get broken uh, in the laundry. Uh, the, uh, the better ones is to look for what's called reversal, uh, removable stays and the traditional one is plastic like this and when it breaks you just replace it but it'll keep it stiff. Something that I find uh, uh, very attractive in the removable stay is metal ones and this one here is made by uh, Terwitt T-Y-W-H-I-T-T and the genius of this is you can bend it. You bend it and where it's slightly bent down and it will never rise above the lapel. Look very neat. The watchword always, in everything I say, I don't want to cramp your style as an individual or whatever, but everything I say to you is conservative and if you go conservative you'll rarely go wrong. Uh, variations on the normal ties, the uh, shirts that we have is, is um, a, a, a white uh, collar, a, a cuff and um, uh, uh, a, with a background color of let's say pale blue or um, a green or uh, pink and that looks very good. You have a raft of choices in uh, your shirt uh, material, uh, stripes, patterns, solids, um, I'll be talking about how to find the correct tie to go with that in another video but just don't get anything too loud. You, we want people to look at you, uh, not your shirt. Some smaller decisions you make is one initials or no initials and some people put them on the sleeve here which I think is a little flashy. Other people wear it uh, up, uh, above their heart and that's the normal way to go. Uh, they are useful if you send your shirts out to uh, be laundered, uh, it's less likely you're going to lose them. Another decision is uh, um, pocket or no pocket. Uh, this does not have a pocket. Uh, it, the tradition seems to be the more expensive the shirt, the rarer you will find a pocket, but it's not important. The, uh, the reason why it's missing is the assumption is this shirt is more formal it'll be worn with a jacket and the jacket has pockets but if you want to if you want a pocket do keep it starch uh, a starch shirt and this obviously doesn't apply to uh, the um, non-iron uh, but you can ask your laundry to put a starch in your shirt I always advocate light starch it looks very crisp uh, except for tuxedo shirts uh, you should go for heavy starch for them um, it'll look a, a, a lot better. Um, but there's one caveat and that is over time uh, starch will uh, damage your shirts. It will damage the stitching on your shirts but it's not too uh, much of an issue. But if you're like me you'll tend to end up with half a dozen or ten shirts that are your favorite and you wear them all the time and do know that if you do starch them uh, that it will shorten uh, the life. Uh, so the finishing touch as I said is the tie that's going to be a subject for a, another um, uh, video but in the meantime uh, if someone else needs uh, suggestions or help in this area uh, don't forget to give them the link. Uh, see you next time.